Everybody's ready? Everybody loves data governance? Guess what, guys? There are at least a hundred and another hundred and many other hundreds of ways you can fail at implementing data governance. As a matter of fact, there are less than 10% of data governance initiatives that manage to deliver any kind of business value. And that's a problem. That's a problem for many different reasons. Your companies are investing in analytics. They're spending money on wanting to implement artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, all these fantastic buzzwords that we all want to reap benefits from. But if your data is no good, what is the point? You're essentially just throwing money away. My name is David. I work for the Aldo Group. For those of you that don't know the Aldo Group, we are a fashion footwear and accessory retailer, wholesaler, private labeling company. We have operations in over 100 countries, so we are quite large, and we are headquartered in Montreal. And I joined the Aldo Group to help them implement a data governance program, as well as data science, master data management, and business intelligence. So let me walk you through some of the failure points that you want to avoid. I will tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do in order to be able to benefit from data governance. The first main problem I've noticed is that people don't understand what data governance actually is. We'll walk through each one of those points individually. Your sponsorship, you need to have the proper executive sponsors if you want this initiative to work. Change management is often forgotten, neglected, or just not present at all, which will cause you to fail as well. And we have this tendency to try to boil the ocean. We want to do too much at once. Focusing on software is the other big point that I notice as a failure when we try to implement data governance. It is not about the software but we will talk about what it is about. So what is data governance? If you guys took two minutes and went on Google and looked for data governance definitions, you'd find Gartner's or the Data Governance Institute or Forrester's. There are plenty of very valid definitions, but they wouldn't fit on this slide. They are way too long. They are complex, and they make it very difficult to render data governance tangible and understandable and palatable to our executives that aren't in love with data governance the way we all are. So what is data governance? Well, I've decided to dumb down the definition a little bit and bring it down to a single sentence. And ultimately, what we try to do with data governance is to implement processes and controls to prevent people from doing stupid and dangerous things with data, because they will not because they mean ill, simply because that's the way we were doing it. It's always been like this, some of the worst and most dangerous phrases in any company. So ultimately, data governance is that one sentence. How we're gonna do it, that's a whole other story. But what we are trying to accomplish is to protect our data. To do this, we need to treat data governance as a strategic initiative. For the little story, my departments, all of them, are actually business side. We are reporting into the head of strategy directly into the CEO's office. Because for the Aldo Group, we know that we are going to survive the retail apocalypse, leveraging data and becoming more data focused, more data driven. So how do we strategize for a department, for a function. Well, we're going to set objectives. You have to go through this process. It's the feedback loop. You set your objectives. You define goals that you're going to be tracking against. You're going to set strategies in order to ensure that you can attain your data governance, your data management goals. You're going to create tactics that you are going to be able to measure. You're going to measure each one of those you're going to measure each one of those tactics to ensure that you are reaching your goals. 
And once that's done, you're going to take those learnings and apply them to your objectives for the next year. And you should be doing this regularly for your data governance program. You need proper executive sponsorship. And I mean finding the right sponsor. Unless you're an IT company, the CIO and the CTO are not the right sponsors to lead your data governance initiative. It needs to be a very strong leader that is embedded in your business. That's who you want. That person is going to have several responsibilities as part of your data governance program. And so you're going to want to educate them on what data governance is. What are the benefits that we're going to get out of data governance? How is it going to help us drive value for our company? Because they are going to be evangelizing it for you. They are going to be sitting in executive committees talking about X, Y, and Z business initiative or future venture, and they need to be able to bring up the importance and the value of data governance. So they are going to be your champion. They better be the right person. They better have the right level of influence within your organization. They're also going to help you drive change. Now, remember I mentioned data governance isn't about focusing on software. That it is about, however, there is a piece of change management. If you want to have better quality data, doing things the way you were doing them that led you to have poor quality data is probably not the right approach. You need to change the processes that are leading you to this bad data. The challenge, though, is that when you start touching processes, you're touching the way people work. You're touching their habits. You're touching their day-to-day -day operations. That requires sometimes a little bit of a heavy hand coming from the top to help you push this through. Now, if you don't have the right sponsor that can drive those changes for you, it's not going to work. The next thing that this sponsor is going to help you do is ensure that your organization is properly positioned. So where does data governance fit? And my opinion, and what I've seen that works, is that it is in the business. It is not in the technology department. Now, why does data governance fit in the business? Let me ask you a question. Show of hands. Who creates data, business or IT? Business? IT? So in general, the business creates the data, right? People create purchase orders in your system. People create sales transactions at the point of sale. People create products in your product lifecycle management. They're not IT users that create those. It's the business users that create them, right? Who uses our data to make decisions? It's the business users that then use the data in order to run analytics, do some self-service. Your data science team is going to build predictive models. Business. Again, you want these processes to be embedded with them. And when the data is wrong, decisions are wrong, profits get impacted. But once again, it's the whole business that gets impacted, not just one department. So you want to make sure that your data governance program is embedded within the business. Now, data governance is about communication. And when it's not about communication, we miss out on the entire change management piece. So you need to focus on what's in it for them. When you're going to talk about your data governance initiative, you have to bring in the benefits for the individuals. Again, you're changing the way they do things. What does that mean for them? Why is it good for them? People generally are very protective about what they have and how they do things. If you simply go in and tell them it's better for the company, they're like, great, but you're asking me to do 100 different things different ways. Why? What's in it for me? Try and focus on what's in it for them. It is part of any change management initiative that you're going to want to drive. Now, we try to boil the ocean. That's one of the big failure points. We have delusions of grandeur. We think we can do it all, but we can't. 
I've seen a lot of enterprises go in, try and deploy data governance across the spectrum. Let's do data governance. Okay, let's put in a steering and let's do this and let's create all these policies. That's ultimately what we're going to end up by doing. But you can't go and attack everything at once. It's too much. Don't forget, for example, at Aldo, we have tens of thousands of employees in a company that's been around for 40 years present in 100 countries. How am I going to tackle everything at once? That's completely ridiculous. It's just not feasible, nor is it realistic. And so what you want to do is take a different approach, one that I personally like to use, which is stealth governance. And so instead of going in and saying, hey, we're going to deploy a great big data governance project, I attach data governance to initiatives that are currently ongoing. For example, I had when I first started at Aldo, an interview with a director from our supply chain operations that was in charge of quality control on our products in Asia and everywhere else we manufacture them. But the process was complex and very manual, all driven by Excel spreadsheets and people entering data manually. Well, of course, that meant that we ended up with duplicate information, customers that had the wrong name in one system compared to another system, 12 vendors that really were one but spelt differently, poor data governance processes. So we implemented a new little project just on that, delivered it, created value, 1,500% ROI. That's crazy for a small little, little data governance initiative. But it was stealthy. I didn't go in selling it as, you guys are doing everything wrong, let me put some data governance in. We went in with, here's a little project that will deliver a lot of value, let's do it together. And then we started to add to new projects and additional programs. And of course, now that we had to implement a new ERP, SAP, which is a pretty heavy one to put in place, well, we continued along that path and we embedded data governance into every single thing that we do today. Last but not least, let's buy some software. I have nothing against software, just for the record. I love technology. I've been in this field for a little over 15 years now. But data governance is about communication. 80 to 90% of the effort and the time spent on data governance is going to be around communicating with people, not about buying software. It is not the objective of a data governance program. It's about process long before it's ever about software. We are going to change the way people capture information or enter information in existing systems. Software isn't going to do that for me. Process, communication, education are going to help me get there. So don't just fall into this trap of thinking that a tool will do it for you. It won't although it will help. You can acquire tools to help you communicate, to help you centralize the information and your policies and your guidelines and your best practices and your standards and your definitions and everything else that goes with data governance. But the tool won't create those for you and they won't help you implement them either. It'll help you share it and automate the process with the people. So now those are the things that you shouldn't do, right? What should you do? Well, there are two main things that I would like to discuss. The data governance charter and branding of your data governance initiative. You need to create a charter. It's a program. We said that it wasn't simply a small project that you do on the side, that you need to treat it as a program, a strategic initiative, that you want to be able to have goals and objectives and measures and really drive this enterprise-wide. So you need a charter. Now, what goes in that charter? Well, you're going to have a forward. The forward is where you're going to set the table for why you're doing this. What are the benefits you're expecting to drive with data governance? You will explain your vision. You will explain the mission of your program as well in this document. You're going to set what your guiding principles are. Don't forget, this document is going to be shared across all of the executives that are going to be involved in your data governance program. 
your goals are going to be listed in here as well as how you're going to be measuring each one of the goals that you've set as part of your data governance program. The key success factors should be listed in here. And the reason why you want key success factors in a charter is because this charter is going to be signed, signed off, approved, and ratified by the executive committee of your company. So by putting your key success factors in your charter, they're essentially accepting what the key success factors are, and so they will support you in implementing your data governance program. Setting out what are all the different policies that you're going to want to create. You're not putting the policies in here per se, but you're listing. We're going to create a data retention policy. We're going to have something around a GDPR for the right to forget. We're going to have a data classification policy. What are the policies that your data governance program is going to be responsible to deliver in order to secure your data assets? The procedures and processes you're going to want to define, those are important as well. You're going to want to list them. Again, you're not defining them here but you're going to list the ones that you will be creating. The organizational hierarchy, so like we mentioned, it has to be in the business, but what does that mean? Who are the different folks that are involved in this? We've all heard the terms data owners, data stewards, data analysts, et cetera, et cetera. But who are those folks? How are you assigning ownership of articles or vendors or customers or whatever data element you're looking at? Who are you assigning this to? And what are the responsibilities you're expecting these folks to actually have? They need to be accountable for the quality of your data, don't forget. So you want to set that as part of the impacts on your organizational hierarchy. But data governance might not be sexy. And although I'm sure to all of you it is, to me it is, it's a fantastic term, it's a very cool term, it's very exciting. The words data governance will often sound like red tape, bureaucracy, making things complicated, unless you work in banking or insurance and then everybody's excited about governance. But think about Aldo. We are a fashion, footwear, and accessories retailer. We are creative. We are dynamic. Everything's always changing. I don't know that the term governance would sound as sexy to them as it does to me. Funky shoes sound sexier to them. So ultimately, what you want to do is find a term that is going to align better to your corporate culture. You want something that they will be able to adhere to, that they're going to be able to rally around. So how do you do that? Well, you can meet with your marketing department. Everybody has a marketing department. Some have a branding department. So we have a brand and concept department. So I met with them to essentially explain to them what data governance is. What is my vision? What is the mission of our program? What are we trying to accomplish? What are the objectives that we are setting forward? And just explain to them what data governance is but I am not coming up with a name. I'm not even suggesting a name to my brand and concept department. I am letting them come up with a name and a logo. And ultimately, they came back with Data Plus. Now, why Data Plus? Because from what they understood, from my explanations, data governance wasn't about governance for pain. It was about augmenting data. It was about bringing data to where it should be in terms of its quality and the value that it will generate for our company. And that was fantastic four years ago. Today, nobody talks about Data Plus anymore because it became a part of the culture and it's embedded in our processes. And I almost want to say that we love it. If you have any questions, I would love to take them now or later. Thank you.